In all honesty, I was ready to make a video about source work within video game research, but I ran into a simple problem. I hadn't read enough books to properly describe how the source work works. I had ordered a bunch of books, but I just haven't finished them all. Sorry. Luckily, we have a big event this week, and I thought I'd talk about that instead. When I was going through Facebook, I discovered that today was Columbus Day, a huge day to commemorate one of the greatest moments in all of history. And it's been kind of denigrated by a few people. Well, not a few, a lot of people. Because they don't understand the history of what's being shown. I didn't get into studying video games until the, the very end of my studies at college. Before that time, I studied how cultures interacted with each other. And the moment Columbus arrived in the Americas is huge within that history. To understand it better, we have to understand the history of the Silk Road, a road that went from Europe all the way to Asia, and had a fairly open system during the time of Kublai Khan and others. In other words, Mongols, the Mongolian Empire. It allowed free trade within it, and Europe used it. It used spices. It used all the manner of new cultures and ideas to improve it. And then one day, that road was closed. And they didn't really know what to do about it. So, they started to explore. By the way, the closing of these roads was more than just one little area. The entire world started closing up. Even places as far as the Pacific Ocean just started to close up. Stop exploring. Stop having as much trade. So it's a big thing for the Europeans to go, no. We're going to continue exploring. Even while the others are closing up. The Europeans began by going down the Cape of Africa. They would leapfrog from point to point until they could find a new place. All of their ships were designed to kind of go near the coast and explore a bit. And then when they found a good spot, they'd create a, a trading post and go from there. In other words, it wasn't a very good exploration. They had to take many days to get from place to place and each spot might be run by a different government. So they often pirated between each other. By the way, piracy was a major part of all this exploration. If you couldn't have enough ships, you would take somebody else's. If you wanted a port, you immediately fired at it and began to take it over. There were legal pirate groups. Every single country had them. So it was this major competition between the various governments to see who could get the furthest, who could own this road, who could own all of the trade between China and Europe. They continued like this for centuries, going from place to place, competing with each other, trying to take over each spot that they could find, until one day, around 1875, when they noticed something really, really big. You see... They were now in China. They had open borders. They could go from place to place. They had empires that covered the world. And everybody did as they said. And it just kind of hit them like, how did we do this? How did we accomplish any of this? And they started to make rumors about how they were superior the entire time. That their guns, as you can see here, have always been superior. That they had just waltzed in and owned every single person they ever dealt with. And they had always been superior. So the last 400 years was them being superior to others. And not a bunch of pirates attacking each other and fighting each other so competitively that they didn't know the expanse of how far they were getting. This superiority complex led to World War I, where every empire was trying to prove to each other that one of them was the Great Empire, the empire that would rule all of Europe and all the world. And it ended with them all so weak that others started to take over. This has been a history of nearly 500 years of people trying to understand how they had won. And Columbus happens to be a major member within that history. But first we have to understand some things. There were actually two different points of view on how things should happen when people took over areas, or how they took over areas and they could be listed within the Catholic Church. The first was sort of a burn and rebuild kind of idea. They wanted people to be civilized, so they destroyed the area and rebuilt it to look more like Europe. 
The other one was more of a adapt so that you look like the culture and then become more like it and slowly take over. This was done in China and several other cultures. So you can find the two within every exploration that you see. But that's getting a little ahead of ourselves. Really, we need to talk about Columbus and his exploration. Columbus was a bit of a bureaucrat, a man who sat down, did paperwork, and lived off of other people's work. Sort of a percentage guy. The reality was, he wanted to explore. He had explored, in fact. And he wanted to do it more. So he proposed that he travel all the way east. He knew the world was round. Everybody involved knew the world was round. They just hadn't ever gone out into sea so deep as to find out what there was. They simply didn't know, and they were kind of scared. There were a lot of people who said, this isn't possible, and we're not going to pay for it. And that begins into the first part that we have to explain. Columbus had an idea to head west to see what was there. Unfortunately, he had to get ships. To do this, he had to go into courts and beg to do this. This meant he had to find a consulari, someone who was within the court and could help him navigate through it. Then he had to present it to s several people, one on top of the other, until he could get to the king or queen, and then they would propose it between the people they had to find an answer. Columbus was rejected multiple times because whatever he proposed was just really expensive and kind of scary. So he had to go to multiple courts. And multiple courts actually kept him on as sort of a, a payment plan. For instance, in Spain, he was given about 30,000 pesos a year, which wasn't much, but far greater. People gave him the ability to go to any place within Spain ask for food and shelter, and they would have to give it to him. In other words, he had free lodging and food no matter where he went, which let him explore the different ideas he had for moving west. But to do this, he needed money, and none of the courts were willing to pay up for it. So what did he do? He went to the mob. He went to various banks, and the one with the least amount of scruples walked over to him and said, yeah, okay, you can have the money, but we're going to give you a really crappy contract. You have to make sure you find certain land and that you get certain money. Otherwise, we are going to have you pay for it in its entirety. That's not a part you're even going to find in Wikipedia, but yeah, he took a loan from the mob. The only reason why Columbus was able to get the ships was two-part. The first was he was going to other places and Spain wanted to keep him on, so they had to actually take him on. They had to give him a ship. Second off, the king had just conquered a bunch of lands and gained a bunch of ships, which was very common during the time. It cost a lot of money to build a ship, and it cost way less to just take a ship. If you ever watch one of those pirate movies and you wonder, how on earth could it be that ethnically diverse? The answer is... Most of the crews were captured, and then captured, and then captured, and then captured from place to place until they had a multi-ethnic group running for one flag, but having been from multiple, multiple lands. If you really want to understand all of this, might I recommend the Patrick O'Brien series called Master and Commander. They also had a movie that came out about it. It's probably one of the best examples, although it's from a different century, it's about the ideology and the ways that things were done, even into the 19th century, as a way to keep a crew together, even if they weren't all from the same place, and the many tragedies and difficulties they had to go through to accomplish their goals. In other words, Columbus used mob money and stolen ships as a way to go west. Why? Because there weren't any other methods. And as far as we can tell historically, there wasn't going to be any other methods. If you really want to know, a lot of history is following the same methods he used. And it goes into video games. We wouldn't have video games if it wasn't for the Yakuza. They're the ones who paid for all those arcade games you love. They paid for a lot of the video games you loved. In fact, there's only a handful of companies 
that have gotten out of the mafia. They were part of it, but then they slowly got out so that they could sell video games on their own. They still worked with the mob because there was no one else to work with. So you really need to think about this before you start going, oh, well, he did it illegally. The answer is, there was no other method, and you better start accepting this when you study history. The truth be told, Columbus knew that it was the Americas that he arrived on, but he quite often had to say, no, this is the West Indies, as a way to pay off his debts. He was aware of what he had discovered, and he was aware that he had proven that traveling west, or recognizing that the world was round, was a method of exploration. He didn't prove the world was round, he recognized it. Everyone else beforehand just went, uh, yeah, but, you know, that's scary and expensive. Let's not find out. Even after discovering the Americas and opening up a large set of land with many treasures and many, many other things to Spain, he was treated as an outsider because he was from Italy, or what we call Italy today. He wasn't actually from there. He was put into chains and had many accusations put against him. Almost all of them have been disproven, but, you know, they're still talked about today in the same way that many people believe that, you know, Shakespeare didn't exist, even though we have plenty of evidence he did. They just want to make this big statement, even though Columbus, for the most part, was doing the best he could, and quite often tried to treat the natives as best he could, along with the people who wanted to change everything and burn it to the ground and rebuild which brings up Bartolomé de las Casas, who was constantly fighting for the rights of the native people. Well, sort of. He wasn't really doing that. And a lot of his work looked like he was going, oh, this is horrible. But then you read into it and you find out, eh, not so much. You see, they would talk about a village that had a population of maybe 2,000, and he would tell everybody that 200,000 people from the city had died. Then they would find a small land, and they'd be like, huh, this entire land is maybe 5,000 people, and he would say a million people died from it. It just never added up. It was basically bombastic rhetoric that he would use to kind of win his cause. Everything he tried to do ended up failing because he didn't understand the natives themselves and was trying to speak for them, but not with them. And he became kind of a problem in and of itself. Which brings up the final part. Yes, the Spanish did in fact have slaves. They got them from the tribes that they had taken over. The tribes themselves would trade with slaves and gold and other things to make peace with the Spanish. However, it didn't work the way you're imagining it. In fact, there's a lot about the native cultures that you don't understand and therefore are making some really bad statements about, and in fact, downright racist, if we were to ever talk about it. So I've decided to make another video entirely dedicated to just the native point of view from that time about the Spanish and the many conquerors and many people who came in. But as for Columbus, let's just lay it out. First off, he was an immigrant to Spain and was treated kind of badly for it. Second off, he had to get a loan from the mob to pay for the voyage that he was able to take on. Third, the crew and ship he took was pirated, taken from a war, and the crew didn't really like him and didn't want to be there in the first place. So he had a lot of problems. In fact, there were so many lawsuits from his family to the Spanish court that it lasted until the year 1790. He had a lot of problems, and yet, through it all, he was able to do the one thing nobody was willing to do, which was head west and explore. He was really the first person to really try that. He wasn't trying to do what anybody else had been doing, where they would kind of go from this land to the next land to the next land. Instead, he simply went, let's see where we go, and started an entire exploration ideology that would keep into us, and even into the, this day, as we try to explore whatever we're doing.